everybody, Simon here. Bangkok Chronicles, whatever number, as per usual, I forgot the numbers. Slightly uh, different today, we're going to jump onto my dating with the wife. A year after I moved to Bangkok, <clears throat> I'd been dating my wife, mainly on Sundays, sometimes occasional evening. And as we got towards the end of that year, it was apparent that we were fallen for each other. We had fallen for each other. We were moving on to the next level and it was great. It was fantastic. We decided um, after pretty much eight or nine months of dating that Mem should give up her job and move into the condo with me. Now, this, as so many of you guys or girls with partners moving in, wherever you are in the world, everything changes when you move in together. Huge culture shock. I suddenly lost all my space, all my single life. But for Mem, it was even bigger. She was giving up a job she'd been in for years. 10,000 baht salary, she was taking a gamble, getting involved with a foreigner. She didn't speak my language, I didn't speak her language to any big degree. We had the translator, the little calculator thing, but we had to somehow come to an arrangement, almost like a business deal, because of our different backgrounds, culture and plans. Now, luckily one of her close friends spoke really good English. And I remember it well. We, I went down to near her uh, room uh, to a cafe and with her friend. We sat and we spoke for a couple of hours and her friend translated and we worked out, as I say, it was like a business deal. Mem had her son that she was contributing a thousand baht a month which was twenty twenty five dollars she was contributing the same to her mother up in Petchaboon she was paying for her room her food and saving 500 baht a month by moving with me um, as boyfriend girlfriend she Thai people are very money orientated so Families number one, her son and mother, were way up the list before me. And she was very inquisitive on how she would make some money. Uh, whether she, I'd want her to work in Bangkok, whether she was wanted to work uh, and support her family. And it became apparent very quickly that however far we went and if we went on to get married, that I would have to accept her family um, and support them. I understood all this and with the translator there I got my head around it all. I explained to her that financially I would give her money every week so she had money in the pocket and potentially we would earn money together. Uh, hopefully she would help me and we'd go forward and see how it went. All agreed just like a business and she moved into my condo from that moment for the all the work I'd done in the first year it was hard but I'd got there and I was making really good money that first year I started if you remember at the beginning with three thousand dollars in my bank in Thai bank at the end of the first year I had it was floating around in PayPal accounts and banks the different banks UK and Thailand but $25,000 complete profit from a year of trading in Bangkok. I hadn't hardly spent any money on me, just bits and pieces, just worked a lot. But I'd done so well that first year, dollars $25,000. $25, so there was rainy day money there. I was set up, but I was homesick. But now I was in love. So it was just carry on in Bangkok in my head. And as soon as Mem moved in, 
the first month was so many amazing things happened. Um, she was younger than me, so it was almost like teaching someone a new way of life. And she was teaching me her culture, her religion. We were trying to teach, other our, teach each other our languages, a lot of sign language. Now, Mem was commu computer, she was computer literate, really good on computers. She was great with numbers and she was brilliant with exchange rates and the different currencies. I didn't realize, but of course, from her job, the first week, it was amazing. Um, I had to get her, bought her some, a uh, couple of bits of furniture and some bits and pieces for the, for the condo. And I showed her around the immediate vicinity. She knew Pratanam roughly anyway. Showed her my little cafe downstairs in the car park for breakfasts and, but she preferred another one. But I had to keep working, I had to keep moving. And the, 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 the best moment I remember is on one of the first few days, we went out, I had a quick walk around Pratanam, and I had to go to Chinatown. The lady I was buying the handbags off, the main lady, had given me the nod the week before that she was getting some special, really good bags coming in and that for me to go. So I can't remember, it was midweek. Me and Mem jumped in a taxi across to Chinatown. Now again, Mem, she didn't use taxis much. She would use buses and things. So this was, she'd gone up a level. We were just taxiing everywhere. She was amazed, you know, okay, flying around. So we got into Chinatown. I popped in a couple of shops um, to buy some bits and pieces, some of those jewelers loops and a couple of the cheap watches. Back over to the handbag and I walked into the shop where this lady was. Um, and every time I went into this shop, the lady, we, I'd been buying so much off her, her assistant would run across the road to a 7-Eleven, get a bottle of water and a coffee from 7-Eleven, sit me down, coffee, water. This was, men were shocked. And the lady in that shop spoke a little bit of English. Mem just saw all these handbags and the hidden room behind with all the counterfeit handbags. And Mem was amazed. I mean, typical woman. She was just like a child in a candy store. And I said to, you know, go look at the lady I was buying off took took us both actually into the back room and pulled out these bags and they were bright red and white multicolored Gucci bags. She pulled the one bag out which were the counterfeit ones and Mem was just amazed and she was into them looking at them and her eye of detail, she was checking every inch over, every stitch and join. But I had an arrangement with the woman. If I had any faulty bags or that I wasn't happy with, I'd just bring them back and she'd swap them. Mem didn't know this. But then she pulled out the uh, the bag of these equivalent to Gucci's. So they were all the white bag with all the colors, but all the, no marks on them. Different clasps and hinges, just look great. They were amazing. Now I was paying, as I mentioned, anything from 150 to 250 baht a bag. If I wanted a counterfeit, it was about 350. But that that bag, I knew straight away, just from learning that it was a new, into Gucci shops, it was a new bag, it was gonna sell like hotcakes. 50 bags, I said, 50 bags, which was, and they put all the bags in this big, thick plastic green bin liner. But 50 bags is quite, a bit, you know, it's like two or three big bags. She pulled out 50 bags. Mem was looking at me thinking, what are you doing? I could just see her face. You're buying handbags, you're a man. 50 handbags. And I pulled out, it was 10,000 baht for those 50 bags. What was that 250 baht each or 200? Oh, 10,000 baht, I just pulled out, reeled off, bang. And Mem, just see her face, that was a month's salary I just spent on all these handbags. She didn't have the clothes, like, what? You could just read her face. Anyway, I pointed at one of the counterfeit bags because they were beautiful. 
and I said to him, you, you want one? And she's like, how much? You know, I'm like, don't worry. And the woman offered to give me the bag free, but I always paid it. I paid it, 350 baht, whatever. So I got my bits, and it was a short trip. It was go over, get these bags, get back to the condo. Out we come. Um, it was just after lunch. Traffic was pretty bad. And I said to him, we've got to get back to the condo. Now, I was just about to hail a taxi. With that traffic, it would have took an hour. It's only about four or five kilometers, but with that traffic, an hour. Mem got one of the big bags. I think I have one and a half bags. And she's like, no, we... I'm like, oh, okay, what's, what's, what's she on about? I thought, no tuk-tuk, I don't want tuk-tuk. Drag me. She knew Chinatown quite well because she's part Chinese. She'd come up quite a lot for meals. Anyway, she took me back down Yawarat Road and then snuck off to the one side and there was one of these humpback bridges on the main road, humpback bridges. At the top of Yawarat Road, there's one. Anyway, humpback bridge. She walked me to there on the pavement and then down some steps. And we're looking down and I'm thinking, that's a canal. Klong, as the Thais call it. That's a canal. What on earth are we walking down here for? And she's like, yeah. So down we go these steps. And there's a pavement on, on just on the one side, nothing on the other side. Just a bit of a pavement walkway went along about 20 meters there's a couple of posts there and she just stopped there and then along came this long boat it's with loads of seats in it going on the back with a big engine like a car engine a canvas roof in the middle section with poles coming down and he pulled up onto us mem shouted something to him basically what number are you or what he was a taxi what number where are you going um, and worked out I was like why are we getting on a boat we want to go back to the condo yep it was the right one she said push me in I get pass me the bags in she gets 20 baht so I put 20 baht to mem and she paid the guy off we went steady speed but at one part it was really quick and the water was splashing you then a boat come the other way water taxis when he went past, the wave came up, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to get wet here. But it wasn't too bad. Along this clong, and then suddenly, he did a 90-degree turn, quite quick as well, off down another clong. That must have been about two kilometres. Pulls up next to another walkway. Says something to Mem. And Mem, she threw the one bag up. She leapt up onto, there's no steps around there, but there's a bar to hold. She leapt up onto the side. I threw the other bag up and then I climbed out. And then she sort of nodded at the guy and off he went. I thought, well, that was good. Great, but where the hell are we? Just wait, 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 wait. Along come another one. She asked, no, wrong one. Another one come along. Yes. In we get again, 20 bar. So that's 40 bar. Off he took, zips along. Another couple of kilometres, round a couple of corners, different canals, stopped, out we got. Up the steps, and we were on the bridge by the Sea Tan Centre, the big sea, opposite side of our condo, Petchbury Road. Literally, we were there. But we still had, because you had to walk around the corner and go up over one of those big overpasses, the roads, Petchbury Road was about eight lanes. So it's a big walkway over the top of the road for, for pedestrians. It's got all these bags up the steps, over the walkway. And then we're like five minutes to the condo. Food. You know, wanted to get some food to go back to the condo. I knew I was going to be tapping away on the computer. So, ma'am grabbed a load of Thai food from the one corner. Soy 19 and 17. There was great food, Thai food around there. Fabulous. She grabbed a load. I wanted 7-Eleven, cigarettes, bits and pieces. My coffee was these little bags, little singular strips. It was three in one Nescafe. You just pour that into a cup of hot water. It had sugar in it, it had creamer in it, and it was coffee. It tasted great. There were a couple of bars. I 
can't remember how much they were, but I used to buy a big bag of about 80 or 90. Anyway, 7 of them was just there, grabbed some stuff from there, got myself some croissants, which was a favourite of mine. Up we went to the condo. Man, still no idea all these bags. Back to the condo. And, oh, I know 15 minutes, we go on a bit. I then, for the next 24 hours, punched in all these new bags, did all the photogra photography, photographing. She was amazed I was doing all this, but she couldn't understand. Did everything, listed them all, got everything sorted. Laptop was plugged into the screen that some shy had lent me. Got it all done. Now, the first one of those Gucci bags, I showed them online, Gucci store, there's the bag. It looked, but it wasn't, nothing markings for Gucci. Showed her and she was amazed. Put on eBay, the first one I put on, I didn't put a buy it now price, like most of the ones I did. I just set it at about five pounds, seven dollars or something, just to see if it would find its own price and what it would start selling for set it all got it going and this was early evening and i showed ma'am there was all these round the stuff i'd got listed you'd get a red zero when someone bid you'd get a green it would go to green and one bid or two bid and the price and i showed her that and she sat there amazed watching it glued and within 15 minutes because it was early evening it was early morning stateside maybe the west east coast a lot of customers over there. The bid started coming in and she saw the red zero go to green, like number one, number two, she watched the price. Now, she knew that I'd put them on at dollars, I think, and she knew the dollar bar exchange rate, and she knew that I'd paid, um, I think it was, what, 250 baht, which was about three, it was about $5. She knew that was the point, $5. And I'd got the postage below, so that was covered, and I explained that to her. And then she watched the price, and the bids came in. This handbag was probably one of the best I ever had. It wasn't going to go huge money because it didn't have the Gucci stuff on it. But her face was a picture. I thought it was going to go to about $40. I thought it was that nice. It went up to $60, 61 She was calculating. I could see her face. Kept looking at me and, went, and over the next few days, <clears throat> I sold all those 50 bags, average about $40, great profit. Mem, she started twigging what I was doing. We'll carry this one on, tell you what happened next with her and how she changed everything for me. See you soon.